After a week of tension between SpaceX and NASA, things have taken an unexpected turn. The private company quickly released a series of updates on the HLAS program, clear proof that Starship's development is still right on schedule. That move quickly restored public confidence and even left NASA's acting administrator with no choice but to walk back his earlier remarks. So, how far has the HLS program actually come? And can SpaceX really deliver in time for the 2027 Artemis III mission? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. As anyone following recent news already knows the tension between SpaceX and NASA began when acting administrator Sean Duffy openly criticized Elon Musk's company on Fox News. He argued that SpaceX's progress might not be fast enough to stay on schedule, raising concerns that the United States could lose its lead in lunar exploration to China. Yeah, his concern really makes sense. But the problem is, he made a big mistake by provoking Elon Musk, especially by bringing Blue Origin into the conversation, and even suggesting that NASA should be merged under the Department of Transportation. The situation became so tense that officials at the White House reportedly expressed frustration, saying they're tired and increasingly impatient with Duffy's ongoing feud with Musk, a controversy they see as completely unnecessary. And honestly, it's not hard to see whose side they're on. Musk isn't just rich, he's insanely influential. He owns X, dominates the conversation on social media, and his voice easily reaches millions through mainstream outlets too. With that kind of reach, Musk could literally help shape public opinion heading into the 2026 midterm elections. But here's the thing, it doesn't really matter who's backing Musk or how powerful his influence is. At the end of the day, both he and SpaceX still need to prove that Starship HLS is actually making real progress and staying on schedule. Because without real progress, all that support means nothing. And well, it looks like they've just done exactly that. Just a few days ago, on October 23rd, barely three days after the whole drama broke out, something really strange was spotted at Starbase. At the production site, workers were seen moving a massive, never-before-seen steel structure. It looked kind of like a Starship nose cone, except without the tip. But here's the thing, it definitely wasn't a part of Starship. The structure had a grid of perfectly cut square openings across its surface all neatly aligned and a temporary metal bar welded on the side, probably to keep it from warping during transport. That's when speculation exploded online. Many believe this could be the crew compartment for the Starship HLS, since the section appeared huge around 9 meters in diameter, and those square cutouts could very well be window openings. However, others pointed out that the layout didn't match any of the official HLS renders. The number and placement of windows seemed off way too many at multiple heights, and even overlapping. So, the more likely explanation is that this is just a manufacturing test article, a mock-up to study how to cut and reinforce window openings in stainless steel. But then again, if it's just a test piece, why would they reinforce the openings with metal bars like that? Either way, it's a clear sign that SpaceX is actively working on HLS hardware right in the middle of all this NASA drama. This isn't the first time SpaceX has dropped clues like this. They've done it before, several times actually. For example, remember the airlock module that was spotted inside the Star Factory late last year? It literally had a sign on it that read HLS Airlock. The design looked super modern, compact, and functional, clearly built with a refined approach to how astronauts will access the lunar surface. That same module appeared almost identical to the one seen integrated into the nose cone of the HLS prototype at Starbase in 2024. And it didn't stop there. We've also seen what looked like the HLS crew seats inside the Star Factory seats that closely resemble those used in Crew Dragon capsules. Plus, earlier elevator tests already hinted at how astronauts will move between Starship's cabin and the lunar surface. All of this points to one thing SpaceX hasn't been slacking off on the HLS program at all. In fact, they've been quietly making steady progress, possibly leading up to a major reveal later this year. It's entirely possible that SpaceX could announce the completion of the first full HLS assembly and begin preparing for a test flight sometime in 2026. After all assembling, a Starship doesn't actually take that long, the real work is in optimizing it for the new Super Heavy version 3. And yes, HLS will fly on a Super Heavy booster. The only remaining booster right now is B-17, it's still sitting quietly in the rocket garden, unused since Flight 11 flew with Booster 15 instead. 
For whatever reason, B-17 was skipped, and that makes it unlikely to be used for HLS. So the timeline for HLS will now partly depend on how quickly SpaceX can roll out the upgraded version 3 boosters. They'll also need to adapt the HLS aft section to fit the newly designed hot staging ring of the Super Heavy V3. After all, HLS was originally designed back in 2021, and a lot has changed since then. So, what exactly will the HLS look like? Well, it still builds on the same Starship Foundation, a stainless steel body about 9 meters wide and roughly 50 meters tall when fully assembled. But to handle a lunar mission, it's been heavily modified. The propellant tanks are stretched to carry much more liquid methane and liquid oxygen for its six main Raptor engines, likely upgraded to Raptor 3s, along with 12 smaller thrusters for precise landings on the moon's uneven surface. One of the first things you'll notice is the color. Unlike regular starships, which are mostly bare steel with 18,000 black ceramic tiles, the HLS will be painted white. That coating isn't just for looks, it's a special reflective layer designed to bounce off sunlight and prevent overheating, which is critical when operating for months, even years, near the moon, where daytime temperatures can reach up to 127 degrees. Without an atmosphere to dissipate heat, that white paint could literally be the difference between life and death uh, for onboard systems. Another standout feature is the window layout. The crew module will have reinforced rectangular or square windows, designed to give astronauts the best possible view while still protecting against micrometeorite impacts. It'll also include foldable landing legs, an internal elevator to move between the crew cabin and the lunar surface, and large rotating solar arrays to keep power flowing. With all that combined, the HLS isn't just a lander, it's practically a small lunar base of its own, reflecting SpaceX's long-term vision of establishing a permanent human foothold on the moon. Oh, and here's something we haven't mentioned yet. The HLS will also be equipped with two docking ports for orbital refueling, a crucial step that'll allow it to carry enough propellant to safely reach and land on the lunar surface. But this is no easy task. SpaceX will have to prove they can pull off something that's never been done at this scale before, transferring tons of cryogenic fuel between two massive spacecraft in orbit. It's one of the biggest technical hurdles left to overcome, and it'll define how the next year plays out for the company, and whether Artemis III can really launch in 2027. And guess what? SpaceX just gave us a clue about when they plan to attempt that first orbital refilling test. This became clear when engineers at Starbase were spotted working on Ship 39, the very first Starship V3 vehicle inside Mega Bay 1. Cameras there accidentally caught something unusual, two strange ports built into the nose cone section. They are located fairly low on the structure, and this time, it's not speculation. These are definitely part of the orbital refueling system. Their appearance perfectly lines up with SpaceX's transition to Starship version 3, which will define the next major phase in 2026. And just last month, Elon Musk himself confirmed it, saying SpaceX will do orbital refilling several times next year with Starship V3. He added, because we're simply docking with ourselves, this is a much easier problem than docking with the space station, which SpaceX already does several times a year. So, yeah, no doubt about it. The two new ports on Ship 39 mean SpaceX is preparing for a bold orbital refilling mission next year. The only real question is whether they'll do it with the actual HLS or a dedicated test vehicle. But odds are we'll see HLS involved at some stage. Now, the big question is when exactly? According to the current internal timeline, SpaceX first needs to reach orbit successfully and catch a returning starship with Mechazilla. Those two milestones are expected around Flight 12 and Flight 13 if things go as planned. After that, several more test flights will follow before they can safely attempt an orbital refilling mission. If that mission ends up involving HLS, it would require two launch pads operating simultaneously, most likely HLS launching from LC-39A in Florida and the tanker from Starbase in Texas. Based on progress so far, this daring double launch could happen around Flight 17 to Flight 20, sometime between June and August 2026. With the clock ticking toward Artemis 3, SpaceX must soon move from design to demonstration. A full-scale refueling test, visible to the world, will be the ultimate proof that they're ready not just for NASA, but for history. So, are you excited to witness that historic moment? 
If you are, drop a Go SpaceX in the comments to show your excitement and support. If SpaceX can pull all of this off, the U.S. will firmly maintain its leadership in this new lunar era, and humanity will stand at the threshold of a sustainable presence on the moon. But in the short term, these recent updates SpaceX strategically revealed seem aimed at calming rising tensions with NASA. Because while NASA and SpaceX are tangled in disagreements over contracts and exploration timelines, China has been quietly advancing its own ambitious commercial space industry. At the center of attention is Juke 3 Land Space's reusable rocket, which just completed a crucial static fire test at the Juquan Satellite Launch Center right around the same time Elon Musk and Sean Duffy were arguing. Even Musk couldn't ignore it, saying they have added aspects of Starship such as use of stainless steel and methalox to a Falcon 9 architecture, which would enable it to beat Falcon 9. With nine methalox-fueled Tian Kuei's 12A engines and a stainless steel body, Juke 3 blends the designs of Falcon 9 and Starship. And that's exactly why Musk himself admitted it could one day outperform Falcon 9. Its first flight planned for November 2025 will not only deliver satellites to low Earth orbit, but also attempt booster recovery, a revolutionary move for China. But don't get it twisted. Musk's praise for Zhuge 3 wasn't really about giving China credit. It was a way to highlight just how far ahead SpaceX still is. Shortly after that compliment, he clarified, it will take them over five years to reach Falcon 9 levels of reliability and production dosh launch rate, by which time SpaceX will have transitioned to Starship and be doing over 100 times the annual payload to orbit of Falcon. So, in the end, no matter how impressive Juke 3 looks right now, SpaceX is still playing in an entirely different league, one that could keep the U.S. firmly on top for decades to come.